Hello, this is the Slow Food Survivalist. In the following video, I will show you how to build a field proven sled for some tens of euros or dollars. This sled was originally designed by Jaakko Lumme from Oulu, Finland, and it was put to serious test by Erkki Lampeen, who skied over 1200 kilometers, that is about 750 miles, across Finland, dragging all his gear, that is some 50 to 60 kilos or 110 to 140 pounds on his homemade sled. In this video, I'll just go through the building process of the sled. Link to a complete list of materials and measurements can be found underneath this video. Ok, let's begin by cutting the rear panel of the frame to the right angle. In the original blueprints, this angle was 106 degrees, but one or two degree difference to either direction should not cause too much trouble. Then it is time to cut the same angle to the 2 by 2 inch front piece of the frame. And then to the side panels. In order to make two identical pieces, it is advisable to clamp both panels together and cut them at the same time. First, we shape the front end. It is not necessary to do any careful measurements at this point. I use just freehand to draw a nice streamlined curve to guide the cutting. Next to the rear end. This nice little curve is very important. Without it, it would be very difficult to move your sled backwards. Then to the final shaping of the side panels. This part is not essential, but it reduces the total weight of the sled and at least in my opinion looks good too. While the side panels were still clamped together, I drilled holes for cargo binding bungee cords. Before assembling the frame, I drilled holes for the screws to avoid cracking the wood and then just screwed the frame parts together. Before attaching the bottom part of the frame, I planed the sharp edges from the side panels. If you are planning to paint your sled, now would be a best time to do it. Then to the bottom and the runners. The bottom is sheet of a 1 to 2 mm thick high density polyethylene plastic and the runners are 8 mm or 1 third of an inch thick and 20 mm or 4 fifth of an inch wide strips of the same material. The easiest way to attach the bottom and the runners to the frame is to begin with screwing the plastic sheet to the front end of the frame and then attach the runners together with the bottom sheet to the side panels. For that it is necessary to first use a tin drill bit for holes for the screws and then a bit thicker drill bit to make sink holes for the countersunk screws. The pulling gear of the sled is made out of 2 meter, that is about 7 feet long, 10 millimeter, that is about 2 fifths of an inch thick fiberglass tubes and a surplus military belt. To connect the sled to myself, I bolted two pieces of rubber tube to the front end of the sled and riveted another two pieces of tube to the belt. The fiberglass tubes are then inserted to the rubber tubes. A couple of layers of duct tape around the ends of fiberglass tubes give the required friction and the connection is secured with regular hose clamps. This system has several advantages. The rubber tube from cooling system of a car is stiff enough to enable solid and sharp handling of the sled and in the same time flexible enough to act as a shock absorber and to make pulling the sled quite comfortable. 
The pulling gear is also easy to detach from the sled, just in case you need to pack the sled into a car or something like that. And in addition to all that, the whole pulling system is pretty easy to fix in case of breakdowns in the middle of nowhere. Ok, then to the cargo space. To protect my stuff from the elements, I stapled a piece of torque to the both of the side panels. This way the opening of the cargo space and packing the sled are very easy. And when all of the cargo is loaded, just flip the tarp on top of the load and secure it with the bungee cord and wooden locking pieces, which are incredibly easy to use even with thick mittens in extreme conditions. The sled I'm pulling in this picture has been in rather active use for the last 15 years, and when not in use, it has been leaning against the wall of our lock cabin, completely exposed to elements, except the leather belt which has been stored indoors. Despite this mistreatment, I have not yet fixed or replaced any parts of it. And I can honestly recommend this type of sled to anyone who is in need of excellent low-cost workhorse for the winter. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.